All right, welcome everybody. This back. is yep, the mama's back. <laughs> this is going to be number sixty, and we're going to finish up about the sun. You ready? I am. All right, let's go. Happy Mother's Day again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, you want to keep going? All right. All right. So we're looking at the sun atmosphere. The and atmosphere this time. Remember, we did the inner layers, oh, so now yeah. we're going to do the atmosphere ah, this time. Okay. All right, and it has three layers. Yep. <whistles> yep. The photosphere. Photosphere. That's the yep. most tough to say. Photosphere. Yep. Yep. And then the chromosphere. Very good. Very good. And the corona. No way. Yeah. Corona. Yeah. For real. That's that's real. All right. You want me to do this one? Yes. <clears throat> so when you are thinking, or when you have your second graders draw a sun, you know how they always draw that circle. Mm -hmm. What they're actually drawing is the photosphere. Really? Yeah, so when you're, see I have a little cartoon down here? So when you draw a sun in that black layer, that's what's visible. That's what we can see with our eyeballs. It's hmm. kind of that classic picture you think of when you draw the sun. So what you actually are drawing is the innermost layer of the atmosphere, oh. is the photosphere. Okay. I have to remind them of that. It's considered the sun's surface, if there was to be one, because it's that common layer that everybody right. knows. What? The chromosphere. Chromosphere, yep. It's in the middle. Yep. Ah, oh, the poor thing. Yep. <laughs> the middle of the atmosphere. Oh, a color sphere? Yeah, so see how it says chromo? You kind of almost see that word color. Oh, yeah. So this is the one. So when you guys are doing diagrams about the sun, this is one that actually has to be color accurate. Mm. And what color should they be doing it? Oh, well, there is a reddish glow. That's right. And what I'm actually showing you here, see, this is a solar eclipse. Oh, let's look closer. Oh, that is so cool. Pretty cool. Because you can't look at it with a human That's eye. right. Very good. Very good. Nice. Okay. And yeah. All right, so let's do, you want me to do the corona? I do. So remember, again, we're still in the atmosphere. Okay, so this is the furthest one out. And you know when you're drawing that sun again and you draw those rays that come out? Mm -hmm. That thing that you draw that comes out is actually the corona. Uh -huh. um, it's considered sort of that white halo, or if you look up at the sun and you see that fuzz around it. Yeah, mm. don't look at it. No, I'm not looking now. Um, but it extends into space thousands and thousands of kilometers or miles, depending on what units you're using. Yeah. Yep, so see how it's drawn in here? It's that white fuzz. That's all around oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kind of a yellowish. All right. So we're actually going to talk about the sun has features. Oh, my. So not only did we do the layers and the atmosphere, we're going to do the features. Sort of like a face. Kind of, yes. It has very, very distinct things. You want to give them a rundown on what we're going to talk all about? All right. We have the sunspots. Yep. We're going to talk about those. Whoa. What is that? The prominences. Prominences. I know. It always makes me think of, like, walking. Prominence. Oh. You know, oh, like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And the solar flares. I always tell the kids that's like solar farts. Oh, my, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> and the solar whoosh, wind. Yep, and that's the only thing that actually is going to affect us here on Earth that can ah. actually get to us. So you want to do these first? Look at the sunspots. Aren't those cool? The cooler areas, they look like freckles for sure. Yeah, they do. And actually what they are is they're actually cooler regions which is why they look dark, ah. because they're not as hot as everything yeah. around it. Mm. The other really cool thing, and they're going to do a lab about this, is these sunspots change every 11 years. Huh. So the ones that you have here are good for 11 years, and yeah. then they'll change and go somewhere else. Really? Yeah, it's kind of well, cool. What a guess. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, here's some video clip. Hope you enjoy it. Centuries, little was known about the sun. <laughs> However, in the early 1600s, the Italian scientist Galileo used a telescope to take a closer look at the sun. He found dark spots that occasionally appeared and drifted across the sun. He also noticed that the dark spots on the sun's surface were constantly changing. These are called sunspots. What are sunspots? Let's find out. NASA Goddard's Dr. Eric Christian has some answers for us at the Naval Observatory. It's a blast. Thanks, Kim. The sun is a fascinating place and a brilliant object to observe. We observe the sun through telescopes like this one here at the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. But satellites help us, too. To get a better understanding of the sun, let's look at its different parts. The visible surface of the sun, that which we can actually see with the human eye, is called the photosphere. Temperatures here are around 6,000 degrees Celsius. The next two outer layers of the sun's atmosphere are called the chromosphere and the corona. The corona is actually hotter than the photosphere at temperatures of 1 to 2 million degrees Celsius. The corona is visible to the naked eye during solar eclipses. Remember the dark spots, or sunspots, that Galileo studied with his telescope? Well, sunspots are dark, cool areas of the sun's surface where charged particles are emitted. 
The sunspot only looks dark relative to the brightness of the rest of the sun, but it's still pretty hot, 4,000 degrees Celsius hot. The average sunspot is about the same diameter of the Earth. Sunspots generate some of the most violent storms in the solar system. When a sunspot erupts, we call this a solar flare. Solar flares are some of the biggest explosions in the solar system. When a solar flare occurs, gas heat of more than tens of thousands of degrees and energy surpassing billions of atomic bombs is hurled out from the sun. Another type of explosion is the CME, or coronal mass ejection. These explosions can reach speeds of millions of kilometers per hour and can reach the Earth in just three days. Both solar flares and CMEs can be very disruptive to human activity on Earth and in space as these storms, we call them solar storms, travel to the Earth. All right, so let's talk about those prominences. See this? This is a great picture. This is from oh, NASA. I tried to yeah. grab as many real pictures as I could. And a prominence, I always tell everybody, it's like a cursive L, kind of. So if you're going to draw it, it kind of comes up and goes back in. Um, it, it's a big loop. That's how you can distinguish it from some of the other sun features. And it can extend, as you can see here, way over the edges of the sun. Yeah. yeah. It does look pretty cool. Yeah. And this is courtesy of NASA. Yeah. They have a lot of great things. Apparently we have a lot of wind today as well. All right. Here's some video clips. Hang tight. All right, you want to do solar flares? Solar you want me to flares. Well, these are the gas eruptions. A.K.A. sun farts. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. And they give off energy. Lots of energy. Ooh, and they are from the, the sun. sun. That's right. So this is the difference between a solar flare and a solar prominence is this isn't a loop. It's not connected. Mm. Solar flare is kind of that one burst of energy. Yep. And it doesn't smell bad. Yep. <laughs> Thank heavens. All right, you want to talk about some history? Dun, dun, dun. Going okay. back in history, in 1859 was the largest on record that yep. they've, well, I don't know they've seen, but. Right, or felt, or, I don't know, recorded, or whatever. And if it happened today, it would make all the computers, the electrical lines, and the communication devices useless. Right, so I have a bunch of pictures for you down here of all the things that it could affect if it actually were to happen today. Wow. But back in 1859, they didn't have to worry. It wasn't that, like they had all their iPads and their phones and whatever. That's true. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about solar wind. And this is a very funky diagram, isn't it, that oh, I've got yeah. here? So this is the only thing that can enter Earth's atmosphere. It can produce magnetic storms, interrupt radios and phones and TVs. It'll actually be distortions. Hmm. You see a lot of it more by the poles, which would make sense, right, But when yeah. it's coming across. And you, that aurora borealis, you know, those dancing lights in Alaska yeah, you hear of? Those are, pretty. Those are um, what's caused by solar wind. Okay. Solar wind. <laughs> you want to read it, this one? It reaches the earth. That's right. Oh, no, it's similar to a hurricane? Yeah, except it's going to be in the form of that solar wind, so you're not going to get the rain and stuff like that, but like that kind of a storm that blows through and blows out. Oh, but it carries the hydrogen atoms yep. and magnetic storm. Yep. It takes four days to reach us. Yep, so we'll know. Yep. And plenty of time. Yep. Our magnetic field on Earth shields us and allows the solar wind to pass 
harmlessly. Yep, and that's what I'm trying to show you here in the picture. So the purple here is our magnetic field, and this is the solar wind coming across, and this is why it's showing you how it's actually deflecting off. Oh, Pretty cool, interesting. Huh? All right, comes together. Yep. You want oh, to give them their the assignment? Summary. Yep. All right. Describe and diagram. Yep. So create your own really quick. It doesn't have to be like any beautiful work of art. Just quick, quick. Yeah. And we want to see for the sun layers. And of course, we're going to look at the six, the core, mm -hmm. the radiation zone, mm -hmm. the convection zone, the photosphere, yeah. the chromosphere, <laughs> and the corona. Very good. And sunspots, prominences, solar flares, and solar wind. All right. Well, thanks for traveling all the way to New York to see no me problem. this weekend, I gotta Mama. I got to go back, but I'm glad it's a sunny day. <laughs> That's right. Take care.